Hey, I'm Dusty. Friends call me Moose. I'm the dude behind CameraTips.com. And in this video, I wanna share with you my memory card recommendations for the Sony A6000. Now, if you want me to cut right to the chase, you don't wanna watch the entire video, the card that I recommend is the SanDisk Ultra 80 megabyte per second card. And I recommend getting it in the 64 gigabyte capacity. And there's a specific reason why, and I'll share that here in a little bit. Now this card you can find online for about 15 bucks. It's really affordable. I chose this because it works perfectly with the A6000 and it's also priced right. Uh, I'll go ahead and link to it down in the description below in case you wanna check it out. So let's talk about cards that are compatible with the A6000. You can use Sony memory stick cards, which are a proprietary card developed by Sony for Sony cameras. I don't recommend doing that in case you ever decide to upgrade or switch cameras. What I do recommend is getting an SD card. Now choosing an SD card can be kind of confusing. There's all these different ratings and speeds. Thankfully, I have a ton of SD cards on hand. I've been able to test them all out in real world situations and I wanna report my findings. Now I've kind of boiled them down to these four here. We have the SanDisk Ultra 80 megabyte per second, Alexar Professional 95 megabyte per second, Alexar Professional 150 megabyte per second, and a SanDisk Extreme Pro 300 megabyte per second. So each of these is progressively more money because you're paying for faster read write speed. The good news is that there is zero performance difference in using these cards inside the Sony A6000, so you can go with the cheaper card. Now, I tested this in many different situations. I used continuous drive mode set to high. I took a burst of images, I filled up the buffer, I timed it to see if there's any difference in how fast the data was written to the card. There is zero difference. I recorded high quality video. I played back images. I tried to do it quickly back and forth to see if there was any lag. Again, zero difference between the slower card and the faster card. Now, you will notice a performance difference when transferring data from your card to your computer. I have this SanDisk ImageMate Pro. It's a USB 3 memory card reader. It can transfer data at about 350 megabytes per second. So with the faster SanDisk Extreme Pro 300 megabyte per second card, I can transfer data about three and a half times faster than the SanDisk Ultra. So when these cards are really filled up, it can take a little bit of a while for this card to transfer data while this one is much, much faster. So if you're regularly recording video or you constantly are transferring images to your computer, uh, you will see a time difference when transferring that data using the faster card on a fast memory card reader. I'll go ahead and link to this memory card reader down in the description below in case you're interested as well. Now, before I mention having a 64 gigabyte card and there's a reason why. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in a 32 gigabyte card and show you why we need a 64 gigabyte card. Now, if we go to the menu here on the back of the camera, I'm gonna navigate over to the first tab, first page, down to file format. Now, this is the recording file format. And by default, it's set to AVC HD, and this is good for regular home movies. However, if you wanna use this camera professionally or maybe for YouTube and you want a higher recording file format with a little bit less compression, you wanna come up here to XAVCS. Now watch what happens here if I select this. I get this error message and it says, change the file format or change the memory card. So basically what the camera is saying here is that it cannot use a 32 gigabyte card or less. It doesn't matter if I even use the faster card, it has nothing to do with the read write speed, it has everything to do with the size of the memory card. So you absolutely have to have a 64 gigabyte card if you wanna use this higher quality recording format. Now, if you just plan on using this for home movies, you can get by with a 32 gigabyte card or less. Just wanted to point it out in case you plan on using this camera professionally. Now again, I'll link to all of this stuff down in the description below in case you wanna check it out. Until next time, thanks for watching. Catch you later.